Ferris Roan has a new true 4K projector, the SP005, and they sent this over to me because right now there's an early bird special going on where you can get $220 off on this unit. So that's why we're taking a look at it and it's real 4K. That's one of the things that drives me the craziest when it comes to like looking for projectors and they all say, oh, this is 4K, this is 4K, this is 4K, this is, that just means you can plug up a 4K signal, but it might be spitting out a 480p signal. You have to see the output resolution and this one will do 4K 60. Um, this is also HDR10+. Plus. So the first thing I'm going to do is just cover a few of the specs and then I'll talk about the unit and then we'll just talk about um, the functionality. It's got Android 9, so you can do a lot with this. This is an LCD projector and that's one of the ways they kept the price low, but the quality is so high that it's like, sometimes I'm like, how's an LCD projector this good? And I think a lot of that's the contrast ratio, which is 1500 to one, which gives us nice gradation between the different, you know, the blacks and the whites and it has a really nice dynamic range. Then the brightness is 600 lumens. The estimated lamp life of that is 40,000 hours. So the MSRP is $699, but you can get $220 off right now. If you're looking for a really high quality projector, you don't need to watch the rest of the video. This is probably the best image quality I've seen at this price range. I had a projector that was around $800 that produced a very similar quality. It wasn't quite as bright, and it was also only 1080p. I loved it, but this is 4K. So when you're watching 4K content, you're going to get all them pixels. And if you're watching it on a huge screen, that makes a difference. On like a 50 or 60 inch screen, if you're sitting far enough back, you're not going to notice too much difference, but this can go all the way up to a 200 inch screen. This also has two 12 watt speakers and they produced more bass than I was actually expecting. They sounded really good. They said they have 3D audio. I'm not sure how the magic works, but it does sound like the dialogue is coming out of the middle where it should be. And then, I mean, you can't hear stuff behind you, obviously, but you know, it does a really good job of filling out the room and I'll talk about the sound when I get to it. It's also really loud and clear, so. Get a load of this, you miscreants. <laughs> I mean, for speakers on a projector, easily the best, I've heard. Like, bottom line, the best. cover the physical unit. On the front you'll see we have that huge lens. I mean it's a, an absolutely massive lens for something in this price range. And then on the front there we have our IR and this also does Bluetooth. The sides are mostly just giant vents because it does have a fan. You can hear the fan. All right when you're like right up on the unit and it's playing it's right around 55 or so decibels. Who's going to be sitting with their ears right beside it? So I went like three or four feet away which is still I think kind of close. And when we're three or four feet away it's 47.5 decibels. You can hear those fans. However, when it comes to like watching movies and stuff, I really only notice them when you're in like a dead quiet scene and there's just some very light talking. But once there's like movement or cars or action or anything like that, you do not even notice them at all. And if this thing is mounted farther away, like let's say you put it behind you, mounted on the ceiling behind your couch, like 10 feet and you have a big screen, it's going to It'd be much farther away so it'll be like a hum in the background it won't be a big deal at all and i'll take this any day over a tv over an lcd tv and then when you look at the back we have an ethernet port this also has wi-fi by the way we have two standard usb ports then we have hdmi those are hdmi 2.1 and then we have our headphone port on the back and then we have USB C. but it also have like a, a little bit of internal storage about 12 gigabytes in total which is plenty if you're throwing music and stuff on there and you want to use this as a speaker by the way you can also use this as a bluetooth speaker so if you just wanted to have some music going on and you don't have any other speakers or whatever or if this sounds better than your regular speakers you could use it as a bluetooth speaker so you can use the wired internet on the back or wi-fi 6. i do have a usb drive hooked up now check this out i can do file transfers here and then i can go over to my computer and just put in that ip address you see on the bottom put that into your web browser with the colon 2555 and then you can access this there's a really cool interface that allows you to drag and drop files uh, like videos, you can drag and drop images, and also music. So when you first plug it up, you're going to notice it's doing a lot of things automatically. It's like it does like an auto focus, and it also will do auto keystone correction based upon uh, the flatness of your wall. So it's got all these cool sensors. It worked pretty good. You know, I tilted it up a little bit and it flattened the image out. And then I ended up going in and doing the four corners just to, to finish it out. But I didn't have to do any keystoning on my own. You know, I just had to go and adjust the four corners just a little bit. And <laughs> it was so fast. It was like, okay, we're set up. It's great. And you can do front projection um, and rear projection and you can do ceiling mounted for both of those. So just pick where you want to put it. Now, if you want to measure out the space, see what you've got to work with. At 5.9 feet, you can do a 60 inch screen. And then if you pull it way back 
to 19 feet, you can do a 200 inch screen. A 120 inch screen is 11.5 feet. So if you're doing like a 100 inch screen, you probably needed about nine feet or so. Pretty wild when you're setting this thing up. It knows if there's obstacles around there. It's got some intelligent obstacle avoidance. So if you're trying to like get the screen in a certain spot and you have like stuff in the way, it can sense where that stuff is in your room and like try to avoid it. It wasn't um, exactly perfect 100% of the time, but it was way faster than like trying to adjust all kinds of things manually myself. I went into the settings and turned off all of the automatic stuff because I didn't want it to change. Now, if you were to bump it, it'll automatically try to reconfigure things because it'll detect, oh, you've moved. But I got it in a spot where I liked it and I turned all that off because even though I was moving around a lot and touching stuff, I didn't want it to recalibrate. 4.8 grams, which is 9 pounds, well, 8.99 pounds. The dimensions are 289 by 286 by 180.4 millimeters, which is 11.4 by 11.3 by 7.1 inches. So this is a, a substantial unit. And it's also, it feels really, really well made. And it has this nice fabric on the front and the back to give it sort of a luxurious style. Like you go into a fancy house, like I would expect to see something that looks kind of like this. I'm gonna quickly talk about the remote because you have a lot of the functions on the remote, but you know, you'll need to get in front of it and use infrared to like make sure, no, you don't. It also has Bluetooth. So while you're in the Bluetooth menu, you hold the left and right button on the remote after you've searched for Bluetooth stuff and the remote will show up. And then you can add the remote as a Bluetooth device. And that way you can be anywhere in the room and it doesn't matter if you're pointing it, you're not gonna have to crane around to, to make sure you're pointing it directly at the projector to make it work. It'll just, it'll just work. Now here's your homepage. If you go left, you got search and you can install all kinds of things. And I've got a keyboard hooked up here. This is a wireless keyboard because I didn't want to go Bluetooth. So I just plugged up my USB to the back and it magically worked. You can get Plex on here. If you want to search, you can also get Jellyfin on here. But uh, the Jellyfin interface on this is much better with the remote than it is with anything else. Stuff I don't really use all that much, but if you use Netflix or Prime Video, Disney or Paramount or whatever, you can log into all that here. And you can also cast with Mirrorcast from your phone or your device. And there's the Apple equivalent, I forget what it's called, Happy Cast. there's all kinds of things here. So you can get your you know, kids going here with all the happy kids and Nickelodeon and Kidolo, what, what is this? Kidoodle, bad for all you hustle uh, people. And then we got Duolingo. Oh, <laughs> that's already installed. That's pretty weird, but yeah, cool. I'll take it. So I drag and drop some weird formats like MKV and M4A and they all worked. Over here's my music. Click on that. And this is uh, from my album that I released a couple of years ago. You can also load your own APK files. So if you have a certain app that you want to load that's not available and you know what you're doing, you can do that. And then we've got zip files over here as well. Check out the internal storage. We have 11.9 gigabytes, so it's 12 gigabyte internal storage, which is enough to hold a few things, not too awful much. But then I've also hooked up uh, my own little drive here. So let's see if we can play 4K straight from the drive. Looks like it's working. So this is a like 50 gigabyte 4K file. And this is how fast I'm moving around. Once you're in your media, you also have more options for audio and video. Coming up here and going to your different picture modes. You can pick standard, vivid, soft, user, and then change the settings to your heart's content. Uh, and then we also have our sound modes here. You actually have an equalizer. So you can tune it up for just however you like, or you know, like you can do like a lot of people and just use a separate surround sound system, but it's totally up to you. Now, the main thing that I'm gonna be doing with this is it's got all this cool stuff here. So I wanted to show you all that first, you know, and you got different music video, all the, all the stuff. It's basically, like I said, a smart device, but it doesn't have to be. You can just plug this thing up, press the input button, and you can pick USB-C, HDMI, HDMI, whatever. I'm just gonna click on HDMI and then, hey, wake up, there we go. So now I've got a regular desktop computer. All right, so let's talk about watching movies and shows on this. Now I loaded up some old movies because I love the way just that old film looks on a projector. I don't care if it's an LCD projector or what. It I just love the way it looks. And yeah, with the contrast ratio like this, you know, I don't mess around with the super compressed stuff. And I don't like, didn't just watch Netflix or whatever. I got my own super high quality files. Uh, most of them are directly from Blu-ray. Yeah, it looks good. You're going to be limited, obviously, by the resolution of your own screen. Um, but believe me when I tell you that movies look really good. I thought animation was like bright and crisp. I might want to go in and actually tone down a little bit of the animation because it was like very vivid. But you get that with an LCD. Now, one of the things that's really important to me is gaming. I like to game on a projector. It's fun to hang out and play your emulators and stuff. So how is gaming on this? And I wanted to play a variety of different games. Uh, first off, started with Soldier Blade, which is a TurboGrafx-16 or PC Engine game. Uh, lots of, it's a bullet hell. You're just like flying all over the place shooting stuff. 
and it felt completely fluid. In fact, I think it's the only time I've ever, I'm not very good at bullet hell. It's like the only time I've ever gone through the first level without getting hit at all, which is probably something that everybody else is like, you're a noob. But you know, it was pretty easy and it felt extremely fluid. Um, I, I wanna say like, it's hard to tell if there's any input lag or not. I feel like I'm looking for some, but it's like not too apparent in this game, especially because in RetroArch, you can go in and change the settings to have some run ahead. So you don't really feel the input lag if there is any there. I'll, I'll say this, it doesn't feel as fluid as it does on my CRT, but nothing does. And a lot of that could be just because it's LCD but there's nothing out there that's going to compete with a 25 year old CRT, nothing. But, you know, having a huge screen like this is nice. And as you can see here playing Mario, I was having no problems whatsoever, uh, timing my jumps, landing correctly. So I would say this is completely playable. And if there is any input latency in there, I wasn't really feeling it. It's probably lower than human perception, um, but still, like I said, the, everything doesn't feel quite as fluid as a 25 year old CRT because that's just the way it works. Um, if you're playing RPGs and stuff and you're hanging out or just playing, you know, a fun game like Popful Mail like I am here, those games don't require as much. But yeah, I think you can play games on this just fine. I would sit back and play FPS games on this, whatever. I just, just play your games on it. It's, it's safe to play your games on this is what I'm trying to tell you. Also, it was a lot of fun putting those CRT emulation features on this thing. You've got a giant wall-sized projector with a CRT filter. It's just like, this doesn't go with my brain, but it still looks really good. So I don't care. I'm just going to do it. I've talked too much because this is kind of a no-brainer at this price. A true 4K projector that looks really good and has a great contrast ratio um, and has a gazillion ins and outs, runs Android 9. But I plug it up to a computer and I don't care and you can just bypass it. You don't have to go through it. You don't have to watch ads. You don't have to participate in any, any of the smart features. You don't have to even, you don't have to do anything with it. You can just click on HDMI, plug it up to your computer, plug it up to your Blu-ray device, whatever and you're done. The trapezoid has a 40 degree uh, range, so you can point it in a direction and it'll bend up to 40 degrees. I guess I wish the little latch in the front was a little bit taller so I could angle it up even higher, but I don't think that matters too much. I'm struggling here finding things I want to change about this because this is really like the perfect projector in this price range with this set of specs. If you want to spend 1500 to two grand and get something that says similar features, but maybe is a 10% better, go ahead, go ahead, do it, fine. I will continue to check out companies that are making cool stuff that I like that's at a good price. That's, well, that's how I'm going to end this. All right, so that's the Paris Roan SP005. The early bird special does end in just a few days. You'll see, I, I'm shooting it right now. There's 12 days left. It's probably going to take me a couple days to edit this. So you've probably got fewer than 10 days to get this for 400 and something dollars, $200 off. So $220 off, $479. Check the links in the description. I'll see you all later.